Rich Side Canine, Rich Side Canine Rants coming to you today. Topic of conversation is a couple things, but the most important topic is road rage. Let's avoid it at all costs, all right? This is important stuff. We're going to go over what to do if road rage happens, how to avoid road rage, give you a couple real life stories, talk about what just happened to me about 20 minutes ago, and why I'm bringing this topic up, and uh, cover on that. So, first and foremost, on a brand new phone, pretty excited about it. Got a Note 9 in. My Note 8 yesterday took a dive by no fault of me, 100% my fault actually. So uh, that was a pretty nerve wracking experience guys. If you ever run a business off a cell phone like I do for the most part and your phone goes down because of an accident, ah, it'll damn near make you panic. Anyway, big shout out to Sprint down there in Manassas where I was, uh, let me jump right in. Got me a brand new phone up and running pretty quick, a better phone at that, Note 8 to a Note 9, pretty cool. Anyway, on to the topic, road rage. All right, so today I left my house to come to Winchester to train. Had a van full of dogs driving a ProMaster. I understand the appearance of it, right? I'm a big white guy. I'm in a dirty van. So the people passing me, they probably immediately make an assumption as to what I'm all about. They have no idea that I own a business and own locations and I, and I have other vehicles, but they make an immediate assumption. Therefore, today, I'm on my dirt roads. We live way back in the mountains and uh, we have literally a uh, round trip, eight miles of dirt roads to get from our house to the highway and back four miles each way. And this time of year is a lot of mountain runoff, right? Which means our roads on both sides often, but always on one side is going to have water running down the road because of the mountain runoff. So coming down the road, up in front of me, I see two SUVs. You got to go slow on our roads. They're pretty bad. So, and I'm pretty good on vehicles. So I immediately make it out as a brand new Volkswagen Touareg being followed by an X5 BMW. And I'm tight to the right. Now there's a stone wall. I have nowhere to go. I'm tight to the right. I can't go anywhere. And uh, the vehicle comes up and this Touareg stops right in the middle of the roadway. Our roadways are very narrow. Immediately the guy starts to cuss in his car, starts throwing his hands up at me like, like, like this as he's blocking the roadway now, blocking my ability to move forward. The problem is this, he has room on his side. He can easily get over, but he chooses not to. So it's all good. Um, he starts to literally cuss in his vehicle, throw his hands up, do all this nonsense. I'm just looking at him. I'm not making any emotional reaction to it. I'm already making a plan and we'll talk about that though in just a minute uh let me describe the situation to you i can see clearly into his vehicle right he's throwing his hands up at me i know his hands are empty he can't see my hands my hands weren't empty i'm already making a plan to return violence if the situation gets out of, out of control which road rage often does back when i was a police officer i responded to multiple road rage issues that got very dangerous and people went to prison over so I'm already in that mind state of, I'm not gonna be a victim of a violent crime. It's not gonna happen, right? So I'm being calm, not doing anything, maintaining my thousand yard stare. I have an immediate plan, where to drive the vehicle, which direction to return violence with violence if needed, right? This individual probably weighed maybe 120, maybe 130 pounds. Doesn't matter about his weight. I'm just trying to paint a picture. Flannel shirt, aviator sunglasses, shiny car. Shiny car means he don't live back by us. That I know for a fact, right? I'm also not, like, it's, it, it, gotta be careful how I say some of these things, but you gotta remember something on the, on the mountain. There's guys that live in multi-million dollar houses and are multi-millionaires and they drive old F-150s. This is true. There's guys, my neighbors, that are incredibly successful business owners that make a tremendous amount of money and they drive old, beat up Chevy Tahoe's. Okay, so never judge a book by its cover when you're out in the country. Um, anyway, I held my ground. He started inching up in the side, yelling and screaming at the car, cussing, throwing his hands around. Of course, I never broke eye contact with him. I'm watching his hands the whole time. I'm watching him. He got right up next to the window. He had to go down into the water. You have an all-wheel drive SUV. Uh, you, you, you can go. You're fine. And um, cussed at me as he was passing. You know, his Who I'm assuming was his wife pulled up next to me, put her window kind of down and mouthed the words, I'm sorry, as she continued to drive by. So I continued to you on. Know, but I want to take this moment talk about this let me flash back for a second back when i was a police officer um jump training one afternoon we were doing undercover surveillance training with a jump team when i was on that and we were in a parking lot down in the uh south part of the county and we were actually taking a break i was going to subway a couple of the guys were meeting there we just finished doing surveillance in the parking lot and i'm walking through the lot plain clothes obviously obviously i was armed and i go to walk through a crosswalk to get to the subway and his Cadillac comes up, and basically as I'm walking through the crosswalk in the parking lot, I'm 100% in the right, the car slowed down, but I guess they were annoyed that I went through the parking lot, through the crosswalk, and didn't let them come up. So as I got through the crosswalk, they pulled up right next to me, uh, white male, Spanish male, two black males in a Cadillac, and the white guy who was driving, heavy heavyset white guy, who I 100% in 
after the fact, we knew well-known indiv individual. He and one of the black males in the back had their windows down and they both sit out the window, get the F out of the way, you effing faggot, okay? So I'm like, slightly unnecessary. And if you're a young child, please don't repeat these words. So I turn around, I don't say anything, but I immediately establish eye contact to let them know, tread with caution, right? But I'm also making a plan. I'm not just gonna like blindly act like there's not something bad about to happen to me, right? So I turn around, make eye contact, and the driver again says, what the F are you looking at, mother effer? Like that. So I just hold and I'm looking. Little does he know, his life's about to flash in front of his eyes, legitimately, right? He has no idea, but he's trying to show off, right? The black male in the backseat yells out something like, oh, look at this motherfucker, he thinks he's a gangster. Says like that. Again, I'm not doing anything. I haven't said a word. I'm just standing in a crosswalk actually close to the sidewalk they could just drive away little do they know they're surrounded by other undercover officers right now right and everybody immediately looks at this and goes uh uh something's happening right driver says something to the effect i'm not really shuttling calls was years ago years and years ago but he jumps out of the cadillac at that moment it's go time no more negotiation violence is about to happen and i'm not going to be the victim i'm a undercover police officer for christ's sake right on the job he jumps out of the vehicle and let's just say within half a second of him popping that door and his foot hitting the ground to jump out, he was face down on the ground pleading. Uh, he, he was terrified. You know what I'm saying? Like that door opening and him exiting the car changed the dynamic of that encounter to where his life was about to flash legitimately in front of his eyes. And he was well aware of that once he popped that door and got out. This was no longer predator attacking the prey. It was predator putting the play in their prey in their place very very quickly then within a half a second there's all these unmarked cars people jumping out everywhere everybody in that cadillac is ripped out thrown on the ground and um the whole situation you know could have been avoided if they wouldn't have pressed the issue i did nothing wrong zero wrong i was walking through a crosswalk they rolled up didn't want me to walk through the crosswalk for whatever reason honestly because they were just some gang banging drug dealers and they were trying to dominate the parking lot that's the truth i'm not a cop anymore i can say it as i want they were criminals everybody in that car was and they were trying to establish because i was a young male that they could dominate little did they know that situation could have been deadly if that individual exiting would have pushed the issue luckily he followed orders immediately and hit the ground like a pancake within about a millisecond of cracking that door okay however that's real life that goes back to the moral of what I'm talking about with road rage. You do not know who you're dealing with when you decide to have road rage against another ind individual. It could be somebody who is PTSD, prior, spec, whatever, and you're now road raging against them and you're about to bring violence on yourself that you've never experienced in your entire life, right? You get close to them trying to force them and they just ram into your goddamn car and flip your car. This stuff happens. You try to squeeze past the guardrail because you want to save 0.01 seconds off your commute when you could have just slowed down and driven. Normally, you go to squeeze past and that person taps your bumper and your car flips and you die, right? Uh, these things happen all the time in real life. Or the more common, you wind up pulling out next to somebody, you jump out of your car in this road rage incident, and you have no idea that person has their hand on a firearm, you jump out, come over, start banging on the car, now you're staring down the barrel of a gun. Happens all the time the time okay or you just happen to jump out and now you get into a fist fight with somebody maybe you win maybe you lose but it could have all been avoided now let's just say you then jump back in your car you leave no harm no foul you just got to scare your life but in reality the police are going to be called you're going to be arrested malicious wounding aggravated felonious assault felony assault misdemeanor assault there, there's so many things that can happen disorderly conduct vehicle i mean there, there's the list goes on and on and on and on and on about real legal problems, misdemeanors and felonies that carry jail time, fines, life altering. It's all this stuff, man. All over your pride, all over your ego, all over the fact that you want to you know, drive like a knucklehead. It doesn't make any logical sense to me. So the more of this story talk about road rage, be very careful. You do not know who you're encountering in a vehicle. If you wouldn't talk to the person like that face to face, don't do it from the comfort of your steel box. Don't get confused as if that's actually protection. The moment something happens, the dynamic can change immediately. And never, ever, ever leave your vehicle. Do not jump out of your car, drive away, all right? That goes for both sides. Do not exit the vehicles, drive away. Live for another day. Don't jump out and start an encounter. I've personally had been the victim of somebody jumping out and I just told you how that ended, right? But I've had road rage incidents happen all the time. I'll smile and drive away knowing that if it got real, I would win. 
but I'll smile and drive away because I don't want damage to my vehicle. I don't want legal trouble. I don't want any of this stuff, right? Something to think about, guys. You never, ever know when you're going to come across somebody that's having a bad day. You never know, is that person a criminal? Is that person got mental issues? Is that person just having a bad day where they say, screw it, ram into your car? A lot of stuff can go wrong really damn quick. Anyway, that's it. Rich Side Rant. This is more of a real world rant on um, road rage stuff. Be smart. Think about what you're doing. Drive away. Never exit your vehicle and just drive away. Now, for people that are potential victims, always have a plan. You know what I mean? Reserve your plan until it's time to go. Once it's go time, you go with full speed, full violence of action. You go forward and you assault through the problem and you make sure you, you live to tell your story, first and foremost. But never telegraph that. Don't start talking. Don't start mumbo jumbo and back and forth. No, no, no. Smile, hold your ground, and have a damn plan ready to go. Train hard, train, train, train smart, respect all, fear none, rich side ramp.